Uh, the Dow on that down now by about 42 points. Joe? Expect the uh, crypto industry trying to pick up the pieces following the collapse of Sam Bankman Fried's FTX. Kate Rooney joins us now with a special guest and in interview. Hey, Kate. Hey, Joe. Good morning. So, Three Arrows Capital is one of the most controversial names in crypto. The now bankrupt hedge fund was borrowing billions from crypto lenders and, as a result, played a central role in this summer's price meltdown. As one of the, its biggest bets collapsed, Three Arrows defaulted on those loans and faced cascading margin calls. And, uh, unable to pay those Three Arrows, eventually filed for bankruptcy this summer. Joining us now is Kyle Davies, who's the co-founder of Three Arrows. Kyle, we appreciate your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So before we get to FTX, we have to talk about what's going on here with your funds. So Three Arrows liquidators claim that you and your co-founder haven't been cooperating. Lawyers have said earlier this summer that your physical whereabouts were unknown ahead of certain court hearings. Where are you now and what are you doing to get your investors' money back? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, I'm in Bali. Second of all, we've been contacted uh, by the liquidator and contactable the entire time. Uh, every call, every email, every uh, video we, we've uh, attended with them. So, um, I, I mean, frankly, we've been cooperating the uh, the, the whole way. Uh, just as uh, one, one point to that, the first thing um, we actually did is in the first two weeks, there was a major position which needed to be uh, exercised. It was a warrants position. Reminded the liquidator three times. They didn't even exercise it. So um, in my mind, I think there is a uh, like, you know, a process that needs to be done. But we're here. We're we're co we're cooperating. We're, we're so, some of the biggest uh, creditors ourselves. Kyle, your firm filed for bankruptcy back in July. You haven't publicly mentioned FTX until this week. Why are we only hearing about these allegations now? Uh, we have mentioned it many times, but frankly, it, no one wanted to hear it. Um, if you recall, the, one of the biggest critics of us uh, right after um, our collapse was Sam Bankman-Fried himself uh, of FTX. And we now know, um, as things are coming out, that he was probably covering up a lot of uh, things on his side. And it's also coming out that he hunted our positions. So um, it, I, I think it's one of those things that in the trueness of time, we will find out the truth. And we're looking forward to justice. And Kyle, so explain that to us. You say FTX and Alameda colluded to trade against clients. Your positions were hunted and liquidate, liquidated, as you put it. Walk us through that. And what evidence do you have? Um, so the um, a, a, everything's uh, coming out now, which is why we're being a little bit more public. But um, the FTX and Alameda are two separate firms. FTX is an exchange. Alameda is a trading firm. Um, they have similar ownership. Um, it's coming out that they, you know, shared information um, and that they sat in the same room and that uh, I've got ex-employees uh, or recent employees of uh, FTX, which are bragging about hunting and liquidating our position. So um, th th this is not the way uh, in non-crypto um Companies, this is just not the way it's done, right? There's a clear segregation between an exchange and any any kind of proprietary trading firms, um, which was apparently not the case. Hey, Andrew, it's, it's Becky. Um, I take it you're not in Bali because of the G20. Are you there because Indonesia is one of seven countries that won't extradite you back to the United States? Uh, no. Um, well, for... For one, I, I, I haven't lived in the United States for like a decade. I've been in Asia. But uh, for two, no, it's just a good place to be. And Kyle, we do have a statement from Sam Bankman Freed on your allegations. We just want to read that to you. It's, he says, I'm shocked. He's saying that. 100% disagree. It's extremely disappointing and irresponsible. I'm sad about what's happened with FTX over the past few weeks. And I'm trying to do what I can to address that. He says, I don't want to minimize that, but this is completely different. And he says, there's no truth to their allegations here. Your response to that and question on why he would want to take down one of his biggest clients if eventually that led to the demise of really a lot of other big players in the industry and eventually his own failure. He for sure misjudged the situation, right? Um, I think from the early days, we were their biggest critic. 
Uh, I didn't even trade on their exchange for the first year and a half. Um, but uh, for, uh, you know, as, as they got bigger and bigger and we saw some of their backers, uh, we assumed that they'd cleaned up their act. And we were just wrong. We uh, uh, apparently they were still sharing information, still trading against clients, and um, they completely misjudged the situation. It was indeed uh, after they took us down, uh, the, there was a giant credit squeeze across the industry. And as lenders recalled all their loans, that's what revealed the hole in his balance sheet and eventually led to his, his downfall as well. And FTX, Kyle, may have been one issue, but you also took out billions in leveraged positions, uh, more than $3 billion in debt, and you were the chief risk officer. How were you comfortable with that amount of leverage using cryptocurrencies? Um, well, you have to understand that we're, we're a trading firm, right? So we're, first of all, we're paid to take risk. But for two, we, uh, we take all kinds of risk. We take gross lever, we take spread risk, we take gross, we take directional risk. Um, and after the Luna collapse, uh, everything just unfolded extremely quickly. Every major position that we had went against us. All spreads, all discounted trades, all uh, directional trades, everything. Um, and that was in part because uh, everyone had on similar positions, but also in part because there was a credit squeeze and every everyone had to unwind at the same time. So. Um, there's a lot of pain going through the uh, the uh, crypto industry. Uh, it's not just our firm. It's many firms that are going into bankruptcy at this point. Um, and many of them had on similar trades. So we have some news this morning. Genesis just saying that, which is one of your biggest creditors, said that it's temporarily suspending lending operations. What would you tell creditors and those who are still on the line for those billions of dollars that you owe them? What's their should their expectation be of getting that money back? Yeah, it, it does look like they might be next. Um, it's uh, I think their largest creditors are us, uh, FTX and, and others. Um, there's been a cascade of, uh, of, of across the whole market and a, um, a revision of what it means to uh, have credit, especially in the crypto markets. Um, so we're, we're looking, we want to see the, in the trueness of time, we want to see the truth, we want to see justice. Do you feel responsible for that? A lot of people have lost a lot of money. Uh, the, the, the person that lost the most amount of money was my family, uh, followed by my partner's family, followed by our creditor list. So yes, we absolutely feel the pain and we're, we're in the same situation. Kyle, there have also been rumors that you're trying to raise a new fund. Is that why you're being so public about this? Are you looking for a second act for yourself and Suzu, your co-founder? It's not my main focus right now. For now, I, wanted to, I just want to see the truth. Are there any lessons to be learned from this, either for global regulators or investors? What have you taken from this whole experience? And what would you say to people out there that are still in the industry and investing in this asset class? Um, I don't think this is a reflection on the underlying asset or the uh, underlying technology. I think the technology is here to stay and there's going to be tremendous growth. Um, I think this is a reflection on credit markets. And um, we've seen in other asset classes how credit markets have developed. In crypto, it's a relatively new um, industry and it's going through its you know, first major pain point. So. Um, there's going to be probably new regulation coming in, probably new um, new ways to solve this. I mean, ultimately, we, I mean, the beauty of crypto would be in a decentralized way that uh, you don't need to rely on people, that it would be, uh, you know, the code would, would be there itself to, uh, to do uh, credit minimization, right? Um, but, uh, but yeah, th this is the lesson that uh, everyone is learning right now. And Kyle, you said something earlier about not using FTX in the beginning, that you didn't trust them necessarily. What changed your mind? And were there red flags that you feel like you ignored in hindsight? There were many. Um, the first uh, time I met uh, Sam was when he was selling 15% uh, interest loans that had, and I quote, no risk, you can't lose money under US law. That was his first deck. Um, we, th we then saw him launch uh, FTT in a very aggressive way to raise money for the exchange. 
And we just said, we can't trade on this. This is untenable. Um, so the, for the first year and a half, we ignored it. And as they grew bigger and bigger, and then we saw um, some of the big VCs come in from Silicon Valley and respected in the space, um, sovereign wealth funds, pension funds. When we saw all of them come in, we thought, surely these guys have done the due diligence. Surely they've seen the inside workings and they've cleaned up the act. So I wouldn't have been able to see those, but I don't know. I trusted their judgment and I was wrong. And and there were probably other flags along the way as well. But at the end of the day, that that's what got us. Kyle, we'll have to leave it there. Kyle Davies, co-founder of Three Arrows Capital. Appreciate your time. And uh, Andrew, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Kay Rooney, thank you so much for bringing us that great interview. Appreciate it very, very much. Coming up on the other side of this, we're going to talk to Jim Cramer, get his take on the trading day ahead. Then on Squawk on the Street in the 10 o'clock hour, you don't want to miss this, an exclusive interview with San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly. We're right back after this. It's every.